Welcome to Atticum Plays Port Royale 4. Fifty men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho and a barrel of rum. Drink and the devil had done for the rest. Yo ho and a barrel of rum. The pest was impaled by the boss of spike. The boss of rain with a moral spike. And Cookie's corpse was marked. All right, hi, this is Atticon, and welcome to the start of a new series. We're going to cover the game Port Royale 4. Now, this game is in closed beta, and I believe it's due for production in September of this year, September 2020. And uh, I contacted Calypso, and they were nice enough to uh, send me a key so that we could do some videos on the closed beta. And um, the, right now, the beta consists of two things. There's a free mode where you can play as Spain, and there's the campaign, and there's the tutorials. Now, I have gone through the tutorials, and I've played the campaign just a few minutes, basically, a little bit, maybe an hour or so, just to get a feel, just so I wouldn't be a complete uh, nerd at this or newbie when we started but i really want this to be one that we learn together typically on my channel i go out and play a game for a good 100 hours or more before i ever make the first video so that i have a clue what's going on this one uh, not so much uh just a few hours i've, I've played a little bit of port royale 3 very little, maybe 30 hours or something. So I'm by no means an expert. However, that being said, this is a game about logistics and having businesses and making money and doing tasks. And it should be right up our alley. So I hope all of you will participate. You'll put in your comments, uh, you know, suggestions for what we should be doing. And, um, you know, if you know, if you know something isn't right say so let us know and we'll all get we'll all work together and become good players at this game and by the time it comes out in production we'll have a whole set of people who who should be pretty good at playing port royale 4. so we're going to go into the campaign mode and the campaign basically is uh the one that we have now is spain and I believe there'll be four different campaigns, one for each of the countries is how I think they're going to do it, but um, don't hold me to that. But right now we can do Spain. It's the only one we have access to. And it's Caribbean Sea around uh, uh, 1570. And you can see here this map, all these red, this, this is all the Spanish territory. We've got some uh, French folks up here in the Florida, in Florida area. And we've got the uh, Dutch here. And I think those are the Greater Antilles, Lesser Antilles, whatever. Uh, the Dutch are in through here. And then we've got the English um, down here, uh, running all the way down and touching South America, actually. So <clears throat> uh, anyway, we're going to play as Spain. And they say that this is a good introduction to the game because it has a mixture of the of the trade, the construction, and, and military that you have to do. So we shall see. All right, the first choice we have to make is what character do we want to play as? And there are four right now that you can choose from, and they are quite different. We have this dude here, the adventurer. He receives captains, two captains right in the beginning. And captains are, are you know, give your, your convoys um, special abilities and bonuses, and that's it's a very nice thing to have. He can rebuild vessel, vessels that get beaten in conflict, 
and but he's not as good at boarding uh, fights and boarding fights are where you'd actually board an, the enemy ship and try to take it over so he's he's okay he kind of kind of a fighter the captains are would be really good what else we got to choose from though we have this lady here who's the merchant and the merchant doesn't require a trade license, and we'll get into this as we go into it, but the trade li you need a trade license with every town in order to have a convoy conduct trade there. She doesn't need any. She automatically has one with every city. They cost like 10 grand to pop. That's, this, that's tremendous. Um, and you'll, you'll, see what, you'll see when we start, because this is the one I'm going to pick. And if those of you know me, you know that I'm taking the one that's the business-oriented one. Um, she can trade with any nation, even when you're at war. So you, you could be at war, and Spain could be at war with France, and she could go to a French port and trade. So, uh, hmm. And she will have to pay a penalty because she'll have to have more fame in order to get combat vessels. And I do believe that just simply means the fame that you have to accumulate, in other words, your prestige or your reputation in the Caribbean. So um, there's the merchant. Then we have the buccaneer. And this guy is, is kind of uh, fighting uh, oriented as well. These letters of marquee are um, letters which allow you to attack other other uh, convoys, other, other um, countries without paying a penalty or without, uh, you know, having your home country write you off as a pirate. And he starts off with five fame points. That's a good one. That's a, that, that is a good one. I'd have to say that's a good one to start off with five fame right off the bat. And, but if he does go pirate, he gets a double loss of fame, but he shouldn't have to worry about that if he can get the letter of marquee. So we'll, uh, he, he's a, he's an okay character. And then, the pirates, this young lady right here, she will not be attacked by pirates. That's huge. No pirates bugging, bugging you. Um, if she did go to piracy, she wouldn't lose as much fame uh, for having done so. If she wanted to turn to piracy to make some money, um, but she's going to have to pay a penalty for all her buildings. And I'm more the business guy, so uh, she's tempting for the pirate thing, but that that's too much of a penalty. So those are our four characters. So. What I'm, looking, what I'm looking for in any game like this is who's going to get me off to the best start. The two captains, that's a good start. No trade license, that's a great start. Buccaneer, five, point, five fame points being very good start. Piratess, that, there's nothing here that helps you start. So she would not be my choice. My choice, obviously, is the, the, the Merchantess. I mean, obviously. And Laura Compass, that's a pretty good name. You can flip through this and it'll give you different choices. We could call her Attican if we wanted to, but Laura Compass, I like that. That's a good name. So, um, no trade license required, trade with all nations, and we need more fame in order to open up access to, com to various combat vessels. All right, all right, Laura, let's see what we can do. The first thing you see that kind of passes the pretty test, that, uh, that cut screen is very pretty. Now here, I'm going to have to apologize. It's because it's the beta. I don't know how to do this, but listen. <laughs> oh, I've got the sound turned way down. It kind of doesn't matter. I didn't want to. It's in German. I can't understand a word they're saying. Don't know. I have a clue. I think they're talking about how great Madrid is. Greetings in the name of God and as representative of the Holy Crown of Spain. Heaven sends you, for the area to be colonized is vast, and the development is a true test of our humility and devotion before God, and our intelligence, of course. Due to the large expansion of our colony, the supply... This guy's going to talk for an hour and a half, so I'm going to, I'm going to just talk right over him. Basically, he's setting the stage saying that we have to really build up the Spanish colonies, that they, they're, they need supply all over the place. You can see our mini-map over here with all the places. We're right here in Seville. This is our hometown. And so they want us to get basic commodities ready. So we, we've got a journal up here that tells us what's going on and what we need to do. Now, because of our character, we've, we've already done our first task, which is five trading licenses in five towns. We got it with all of them. And our, cap, our hometown is very satisfied right now. If we can keep it there, that one's done. And then, well, actually, I think it's done because we've achieved that. 
So we've got to do a thousand commodities around around the map. Well, that's no problem, particularly because of our character. We already have our trade licenses, so we don't have to go to these towns and spend money on trade. We can actually do stuff now. There's two main things, I guess. Uh, well, I guess there's three ways to make money in Port Royal. I mean, there could be more, but basically, your ships, you know, running, running, running lines, buying stuff and selling it. Banking, basically, a wholesale business. We're going to buy stuff at a low price and sell it at a higher price. Going to buy it where it's produced and sell it where it's needed. That kind of thing. So that's one way of making money. Second way is to produce the goods ourselves, to cut that cost way down and to make money selling our goods to our home city and to other cities. So we'll get into business. And uh, the third way would then be through, through war, actually. You could, you could capture ships and, and uh, plunder ships and plunder towns and do all kinds of stuff. So depending upon your, 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 you know, how, what you like, uh, you, you could go a lot of different ways with this game. So to get started, let's set up our trade routes. We, we don't, I don't like to do a lot of um, micromanagement. I don't like to do any, in fact. Uh, some's unavoidable, but what we can do here is find our first free convoy. Now, a convoy is a uh, ship or ships that's been set up as a group ready to go. It could be a group of one, could be up to 10. So we're going to go over here and click on the route it says no assignment yet and we're going to click trade routes and we are going to open up this nice little uh, picture here and create a new route and our route is going to be take going over to the west of us so I'm going to actually name this thing right away we're just going to call it west that's easy enough we'll run our routes out of Seville so every Seville will be the common ground for all of our routes so this west route, we're going to edit it. We'll start in Seville. And now notice, this is, this is kind of cool. These are the trade winds, the, the predominant winds. And you can look at that and you can see how you wouldn't want to be going, say, from La Pesca, La Pesca over here, straight across to Cecil, uh, Cecil, Cecil. Uh, because you'd be running against the wind and, and into the area where storms are likely to occur. So you'd want to stay to the coast. Well, that's okay. We'll get into that in just a minute. We're going to pick our towns. Uh, let's go to the ones over this way. We'll go to Seville, Cisal, Campeche, Villa Hermosa, and let's do Veracruz. Let's do five of them. And I do not have any theories or ideas or notions about what's a perfect route yet, we'll work on that as we go. Now, we need to set these up. And what we'll notice is that in every town, things are bought or are produced, that's the little gear thing, and then there are other items that they need. You can see here, there's a bunch of items. There's a whole mess of, uh, of uh, goods that these towns need. So what we'd want really is to if we had a ship coming into Seville, we'd want to sell grain to Seville if we had any. And we want to buy fruit from Seville because that's uh, where it's made. It's going to be the cheapest. Sell, 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 buy, right? So the nice thing is we can push this button right here and it sets it automatically to be sell the goods that, you're, that are not made, buy the ones that are made, and buy it based on the demand along the route that you've set up and do automatic pricing, which means it's going to buy it at, uh, I think it buys it about 100% of the production cost or a little above that, and then sells it for a greater price. So you make money on it. <laughs> so we're gonna stick with automatic for now. We'll get into the fancier routes and stuff way down the road. All right, so what we need to do here, it's a little, this is a little, little bit much, I think, but we have to go to each one of these towns and just click standard. Because in every one of them, we want them to buy what's made there and sell what isn't. It's, it's really that simple. So now we've got a, a, our Western route and we've defined the route. And now all we have to do is hit assign. And notice we've got this convoy up. When we hit assign, it's going to assign this convoy to this route. That's a little clumsy. You have to play with that to understand it, but uh, I finally figured it out. This one up, hit hit assignment, puts him on this one, and then we hit active, active route, and off he goes. So now we've got a western route with a, with a ship on it. Let's build another one. 
So I hit this to give me another free convoy. We've got a second one already set up called Seville 2, and we'll have it run to the east. Let's call it the northeast. So we're going to go into route, and we're going to create a new route. We could, by the way, just assign this uh, convoy to the exact same route we just did. That, that, that's why we have to go here and hit create new route to say, no, we want a different one. And we will call this one the North East. Okay. And we'll edit that one and we'll go here. Now here we, here we see, oh, I should have gone back. Let me, I'll go back to the other one here in just a minute. And we'll look at the trade winds, make sure it didn't screw that up. The fact is, if you're going to go across the map against the headwinds, you got to bite the bullet and do it, right? You have to. <laughs> There's no way around it, unless you're going to run a big giant. Now, we could eventually have a big giant route that goes like that and always hits the trade winds. And boy, that wouldn't be that stupid, would it? Always hit the trade winds. Huh, huh. I think we're going to forget about this route. We're going to go back to our, our other route, the west. We're going to edit that route. And we're going to say, when you get to Veracruz, just keep going. And I'll show you something else that's kind of cool. We'll go over here to the keys. And there, now we have a route that follows the trade winds. And right up here, it has waypoints. So we can actually say, oh, you don't want to swing way out there. Let's get away from the bad weather. There we go. Now we've got a. Now we have a, a western route that actually follows the trade winds. So we'll have to go down here and click. The, and I, 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 one suggestion I would suggest making. So you can if you hit Port Isabel. If I hit all off, everything's turned off. If I hit standard, it does the buy sell as you would expect. I think the standard should be the default. <laughs> I mean, why, why, why wouldn't that be the default? It just seems to me to make more sense. So the good news about this uh, route is that it's going to follow the trade winds. It's going to move very efficiently from city to city. Bad news is it's going to take a long time to get back to our home base, but that's all right. We can live with that. So now all those ships are going to follow that route. Now, what could we do to get like these southern cities? Let's just see what happens if we want to do. Um, let's get another a free convoy and let's do a new route. And let's uh, make this one our north. Well, what are we going to call this? Huh. This is the, <laughs> we'll call it the clockwise. See if that works. I'm not sure which way the winds blow here. Let's see. Um, edit the route. No, it doesn't. Uh, you have to. I don't want to leave these cities. We could just ignore these two cities, but we need to get down there anyway. So let's go like this. We'll go against the wind over to Trinidad. Then we'll go down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What I want to get down to is Maracaibo, because I happen to know Maracaibo is the Viceroy's home. This is kind of the Spanish capital in the New World. So we want to get down there, like so. And then we can, uh, then, we, uh, then we can just follow the trade winds back. Yeah, that'll make a nice little Maracaibo run. And what we'll do here is, have them come out of this. And avoid the spots that tend to get the weather.
That should be nice. And look at the son of a gun. Look at this. I'm editing the same. <sighs> okay, I could have sworn I said create a new route. But here we go. Let's try this again. Edit the route. And go one, two, three. Four, five. That's a five, five cities. Let's keep to the deep water so we can run nice big ships. Actually, I would. Can they just cross on each other like that? That's what I'd really like. That'll give us a nice, great place for pirates to attack us and a great place for us to set up patrols, knowing that we want to run between the, through the deep water. Okay, uh, do, do, do. There we go, that, that looks pretty good. Now, set them all to standard. Ah, shoot, did that work? Standard, so, standard, standard. Okay, there we go. So that route's ready. And let's assign our convoy to that and make that an active route. And we've got one more. I'd like to hit these maybe down to uh, Bluefields and up or something like that, down south. So let's make a new route. And go one. Hmm. Let's just go all the way down here and then work our way back up. Like so. Okay, and we've got the ship, we'll assign the route, make it active. Okay, so we've got uh, all three of our convoys are off and running. And I'm going to speed this up and let's just watch what happens and let's see what we got to do here. Deliver a thousand commodities and you can see it's already racking up because we've got ships going off all over the place. Uh, let's look at one of them. Here's three. Yeah, they're running close to full, so we can start thinking about adding adding ships to the convoy, or just creating another convoy and putting it on the same run. But I'd rather just keep expanding them as we need them. The of the Lord. There we go. We got our first three done. So now they want to get us into owning businesses. And forgive me, I'm just going to talk over our buddy here. Uh, wood grain beer now we've got a fame gotten a fame point from from getting some stuff done so we're going to talk about fame so let's go to the viceroy I'm gonna pause it if we go to the viceroy in Maracaibo uh, he can sometimes give us things he'd like for us to do right now he's happy he's got nothing else to do but we do have our list of tasks from our campaign so we've got fame, and we get fame from, um, for one thing, from delivering colonial goods to Maracaibo, which is, again, it's an import-export to Spain. So the big Spanish fleet, trade fleet, will come into Maracaibo, pick up goods from Maracaibo and return to Spain, and it will drop off uh, people, new settlers, in Maracaibo. So Maracaibo will be 
our source of people that we're going to need for our businesses and for as to be sailors later on. And um, so that's uh, uh, that's a, a key thing is for us to keep sending stuff to Maracaibo. And you can see here when I say colonial commodities, what they're talking about are the things that are kind of unique to the Caribbean or this area versus Europe, which would be cotton, tobacco, coffee, and cocoa, because those are things that don't grow in um, in Europe so well, but they grow very nicely over here. So uh, we're going to keep delivering those to Maracaibo. We have a, a one here that tells us the nations we're dealing with. There's not much to this right now. And we don't have any pirates have cropped up yet. And now the thing I wanted to look at, concessions. Concessions are where you get um, use your points to give get yourself things. Like, for example, we could click here and get a captain's license and add a captain to our uh, to one of our convoys and you can see we can keep spending those points and adding more and more of them but what i would like to do we saw that beer is something we have to make so let's use our one point to open up beer a brewery as something that we can build all right and then let's look at our four wood in cecil now, this is really cool. I like how they've done this. Let's look at, I'm gonna click, left click on Seville. If you look at Seville, it has the ability to grow kind of native crops, raw materials, either mining or, or farming. In this case, it's all farming or plantations. Fruit, sugar, cotton, and tobacco. But you can see it's a rather poor for sugar, but it's, and it's so it's okay average for tobacco and, and a little above average for cotton and fruits so cotton and fruit would be two really good raw materials to grow in seville and if we look at other other places like in seesaw seesaw has wood which is one we need good sugar good tobacco well average and everything wood sugar tobacco and metals so Seesaw is a, is a very nice place to put some stuff. Campeche has grain, corn, cotton, and coffee. Now I'm naming those because if you look here at the production, every city can produce seven items. Now, every city has the potential to, to grow, say four, I don't know if they're all four, but certain raw materials but you can put other plants like uh, tool makers and, and uh, a, a place to make cloth and out of cotton and stuff like that in any city. I love this. You can build, this, build out the city the way you want to. And can anyone spell, smell or say a uh, four city cluster? All right, so, um, or five or six. So we've got uh, uh, to do what? We've got to do four wood businesses and they're telling us you can produce wood and sea salt so so get a um, construction permit there so that's what we'll do we just all we have to do is click on this oh wait a minute town you're allowed to trade now increase your fame we're currently 77 percent so if we keep trading with um sea salt we'll get our uh, fame up in that town. So they'll be more highly regarded. That will allow us to acquire a construction permit. So we've got to work on that. Campeche, look at this. We can go ahead and do Campeche. And I think, didn't it say grain? It did say grain, and Campeche is a great place to do grain. So let's, let's uh, scroll down here to Campeche. I'll click on Campeche. It has a couple of grain businesses. We, we want to add four more. So we're going to add four grain businesses to Campeche. And now we're going to get into a little bit of city building. And I'll be delighted to hear people's comments on patterns they like to use and what have you. Because what we have here, I'm kind of scrolling over. We have areas. These are little, re this, this right here is a residential area. So you don't build a single house. You build, see this? A little block of houses. Well, if you notice here, it's getting a bonus because it's near trees, it's near a tavern, and it's near a church or a chapel. 
So right here is a, uh, whoops, Park or City Central. Right over here, what's this guy? That's shoot. Oh, that's another, that's a market. Here's a chapel right here. So right next door to this uh, residential area is the chapel. There's a tavern here somewhere. Um, I don't quite know what everything looks like just yet, but there's a there. It says there's a tavern nearby. I don't know. Is that? A, I don't know where the tavern is. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, you 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 want to place things where they get the bonuses. And the reason you do with your with your um, housing is this. I'll go to construction. We have a construction menu that allows us to build town buildings if we're the administrator of the town. We are not the administrator of this town yet, so we can't build any. They're grayed out. But you notice this guy here, residential area? If we put one down, it could hold up to 240 if it had the bonus of the tavern and the chapel. If you put one out, out somewhere away from everything, kind of out, out of town, if you will, um, it didn't have any bonuses, it would only hold like 70 people. So you get much more bang for your buck by building out an area that will hold 240 people. Now businesses, we uh, we should be able to build this. Yes, we can. And now if we scroll up just a little, we can see when you get to mines and farms, people don't want to live real close to those. So we have to come, come up with a strategic way of placing them. I mean, we could put them way down here if we wanted to but then they wouldn't get any bonuses of any type. And I, th I th actually think we will for this. We're just gonna go way out here and throw down four grain fields. Notice how it built, built some roads, put in the farm for us, got a farmhouse and four, four fields. And so that should take care of uh, that requirement, the grain. And we need to do beer. And beer needs grain, so the beer would be, ah, oh, shoot, there's where I goofed up. And we may have to just build our own little, ah, oh, shoot, 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 shoot. All right. <laughs> I'm not used to doing this without knowing what I'm doing, sorry. So, what happens, as far as I've gotten so far with this, the way those bonuses work is, you don't want to be near this, however, your business that you build, like your brewery. See, see how it's got this green? It likes to be near a grain farm. See, out here, a brewery right near the grain farm because it can get its grain very quickly. And the breweries, uh, the businesses, the workshops that you build do not negatively impact your housing. See, see, we can put it in here and our houses won't mind at all that we put a brewery in there near them. Okay? So, I think what we can do, we had four breweries, why don't we just, we'll put them near that grain right there. I don't think it matters in terms of where it actually buys stuff. We're just trying to get our productivity bonuses. And see, you can see from this, our brewery is near housing, so it's getting a bonus from that. And I think the, the stock means it's near its source. It, it's near the grain. So we're getting a housing bonus. We're getting a bonus because it's easy to get to work. And we're getting a bonus because it's easy to get uh, the goods you need. So this implies that we need to come up with kind of designs for how we want to lay out our cities without, you know, overthinking it. Uh, so there we go. That's two of the things we had to do. Once they get built, well, they need to be built, and eventually they need to be staffed. But right now, they're just asking us to own four wood, four grain, four beer, and we'll get to this one in a minute, the job seekers from Maracaibo. Mar 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 so uh, that was beer and grain, so we need the wood. So we need to get uh, Seesaw happier with us. Now we get that big old long route that means we're not gonna be trading with them very often. But we've got stuff in Seville that they would like here. There's stuff down here that they would like here and here. So why don't we just build, let's just build us a little four town, tip of the peninsula kind of a deal. We'll need another ship if we can afford one. Let's go down here into uh, Seville. 
go to the shipyard and here's where we can repair our convoys we can buy new ships here's one a merchant vessel oh we can afford it easily we can sell sh extra ships we have or if we plundered or captured one from an enemy or a pirate we could order the development if we had a large shipyard okay so we want to buy I think we'll buy this brig right here. Let's just buy that brig. And we're going to... Okay, and notice we don't have any convoys. Well, that's because it's just in the shipyard. What we need to do is go here and say, okay, let's turn that into a new, uh, a new um, convoy. And let's just call... I'm just going to call this the, the Seesaw um, Convoy. All right, so now we see a convoy. So let's get our free convoy. There it is in Seville, in the harbor. And we'll set up a trade route, and we're going to create a new trade route. And we're going to call that trade route, we'll call it Seesaw. And edit it and go Seville to Valad... Val Valladolid to Cisal to Campeche. All right. And click standard for all of them. I didn't do it right. Did I? I went too fast, I think. That one's good, good, good. And Good, there we go. All right, so there we have a trade route. That'll help us build our happiness over in Seesaw. And we're gonna assign our new ship to it and activate that route. And unpause. And there goes our ship right there. I can click on it. Uh, that one. Let's just watch what he's carrying. So he's picking up a bunch of stuff, going to Campeche, selling a bunch of stuff, buying a bunch of stuff, heading back to Seville, and starting over. I see you have chosen a location for beer production. So there, we got our beer built. We need to get the grain built faster, really. The Lord's blessing is on your efforts to ensure sufficient. And we got that too. <laughs> but the good Christian is characterized by charity. Distribute the commodities to the neighboring towns as they are needed. And we've got enough. Good. That's all it took. Just a few trades to get our fame up in in Cisal. We're going to buy our building permit, and then we are going to build uh, lumber in Cisal. And you can see here, these are kind of okay spots. These are neither good or bad. Here's the perfect spot right here. Why would that be? Probably because it's close enough to housing and uh, what have you. But we need four of them. I forget now. This one. Yeah, see, these make the people unhappy. They don't want a sawmill right in their backyards. These are far enough out. So let's go out a ways. We'll put four right there. Okay. And maybe spreading them out might have been the right thing to do, but I don't think it matters. All right, so where are we? All right, that's going to take about care of our wood, and we've got one other big thing to do. Now, we need a lot of workers because we're building industries, and other people are building industries as well. There are only 49 job seekers in Cisal. And uh, we just built four more businesses, which are going to need uh, workers as well. And the workers are about one-fourth of your total inhabitants. So it kind of treats it like uh, there's a person working, a spouse, and a couple of kids, or, or an aunt or an uncle or granddad or whatever. But it's typically groups of four. So you need four times the housing that you do as you have workers. So uh, you have to accommodate all those people. So let's uh, see. And I haven't totally gotten grasp on habitats are growing, 300 workers, 
don't have people looking for jobs, but we know we want, we just built a bunch of industries in uh, Campeche and Cisal. And so we know we're going to want more people. So let's see if we can get another ship going here. And oh, we've got our Maracaibo run. Uh, and what I'd love to be able to do is, is grab people on that run, but I haven't figured out how to do that in a trade room. So we're going to have to do this by brute force, kind of, or, or how should I say this? Manually, let's, let's put it that way. So what we need is another ship. So scroll down, buy a, buy a ship. I'd like something that would take a pretty good sized crew. You know what, if we could afford them, and we one, two, three can, we're just going to buy all three of those barks, and we're going to make a convoy out of those. And we're going to call, we'll call this our Maracaibo. Now, you know what? This is going to be the Attican. This is going to be our Attican convoy. We're going to use it for doing special, special jobs. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we want to, with it active, we will go to Seville. We'll go to the, this is the manual part where you would manually buy and sell stuff. We're gonna buy, buy stuff that's uh, cheap. These um, indicators, if you played the other games, you know, but one through four is the indicator of how much compared to how much is needed in the city. How much do you have in stock versus how much do you need? A two means you're nice and happy and neutral. One means it's getting low. All red means, whoops, we're in trouble. We need this stuff very much. This supply and demand here is going to drive the price because the price per unit of fruit is going to be lower than, than wood because wood is, is really in need in Seville. So they're, they'll pay more for it. So what we do basically when we do manual buys like this is we just look for the things that are bought, that are, sorry, created in this town. And then we buy them until we get to the one. And then we stop so that we don't lower our reputation in that town. So let's just buy. And the reason I'm buying some stuff here is I don't want to sell all the way to Maracaibo, which is a long way. Now remember, this is whoa, this is cotton. That's a great one to take to Maracaibo. And here's another one, tobacco. This is a great one to take to Maracaibo. Cocoa would be a good one. We don't make it here and we don't have enough of it. So there, there's some stuff that we've got some things in our, we don't have much, but we've got a little bit in our, uh, our hold, and now we can sell down to um, Maracaibo. And in fact, we, we knew from the trade routes that it's bad to go right here in the middle. We could actually go, direct it to go out this way. Down through here. Through this little pass we already knew about and then work our way to Maracaibo. And if we're up higher, it goes faster. As we scroll lower, the time passes more slowly. So I have to get used to that and kind of stay up here high until your ship is in, unless you're, if you're impatient like me. And here's some big stuff we could we could buy but okay let's uh, go into Maracaibo go into the sell mode we're going to sell this stuff that we brought it brought with us where's one there we go there's one we have we have some rope we have a lot of cotton and we can always get a good price there. Uh, we just, <laughs> I said that, and we just filled them up with cotton and tobacco. All right, and what we really want are these right here. We want people. We're gonna grab 300 people, the most we're allowed to take. And then we're going to set sail for uh, Campeche, where we built eight businesses. Um, just gonna let it run. 
The Holy Crown likes what it sees. But it would remind you that the necessary workers also require housing. And a certain quality of life helps to attract them. Okay, we're in Campeche now with our... Uh, our guys here, our, our fleet, our convoy rather. So we'll go to the uh, city to ship interchange and take those people and drop them off at the city. So now we've dropped off 300 people and we could buy some stuff that uh, to go back the other way. <laughs> we'll sell a whole bunch of coffee some expensive stuff let's get some beer actually I think it's our beer isn't it and grain it's our grain so we'll buy some grain Uh, a lot of grain, and we'll go back to Maracaibo. Oh, I keep forgetting about this. I can just click here and move to it quickly. All right, so he's, he's on his way to Maracaibo. It only takes 12 days to get there. This should be him right here, yep. Okay, we're in Maracaibo and let's trade with the city. And let's sell them some grain and sell them some beer. And cocoa and what are those, ceramics? Too many ceramics. Uh, I'm not doing a good job of worrying about this, but what I'm really after are those people, and I just want to make a little money on the other side of it. And let's go back to Campeche. Take off. Notice our money's building right back up as we, as our so our trade routes keep going and as our cities are going. We got a warning here. What's this warning? Insufficient housing space. Not a surprise, but we can't do anything about that yet. We're going to have to hope that the city manager and the city, the folks of that city will take care of that problem for us. So we're back here and let's uh, drop off our people. And I think the next run, let's go up to Seesaw and get some of their stuff. And let's get some some wood. And sugar. And what's this? Metal. Some metal. Okay, that should do. And let's go back to... Archivo. And notice the little star right there. That means there's a task here if we want it. We, if I hover over it like this, it comes up down here on the lower left at a seaside, a young woman, blah, blah, blah. Could you help me find my husband? And you hit the X key to accept and a C to reject. I'm going to reject. I'm not going to do side task right now. Too easy to fail them and get side sidetracked, pun intended. All right, so let's go here and um, sell our stuff. Oh, wait, we don't have a... Oh, it's not there yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a different uh, convoy that was there. I thought it was us. Here we go. Okay, 
and we'll sell our logs. And we'll get some more people. And we'll head this time to uh, Seesaw. All right, take off. So you can see here it's saying the tips. First stops for settlers and job seekers, the Viceroy's towns, that's Maracaibo in our case. From there, they travel to other towns via trade convoys. You can include them in your convoy via the trade dialogue and keep them on board as sailors or drop them off as labor in other towns. And obviously, we're dropping them off as laborers in these towns. Okay, are we, are we gaining on it? Yeah. All right, one more trip should do it. I'm just going to take off and head back there. And we picked up some more fame. We'll decide what to do with that in the next episode. We're going to finish off this task and wrap up our first look at Port Royal 4. Let me know in the comments what you think. If, uh, if you think this is something you're interested in, that's kind of, I'm, I plan on keeping going with it for now because I, 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 my first impressions of the game are pretty good. There are some things, uh, you know, obviously I'd, I'd feel much better if I understood the game a lot better than I do, but that'll come with time, and that's the purpose of us playing it, to uh, get better at it. Let's take these people to, to Seesaw as well. Eight eighty, we've got three hundred coming, so we should be in pretty good shape. Oh, we're already there. That was fast. Oh, the trade, the wind is with the wind more that way. And dump Word those people, the and there we go. Is the workers are bringing their families back or starting new ones. This is how the workers make a town grow. With your growing fame and God's blessing upon you, the holy crown is inclined to grant you more privileges concessions or special vessels you might even be able to take over the administration of other towns to further increase your and my fame in spain you should deliver colonial commodities to my town from there they can be shipped to europe with the treasure fleet with god's blessing you will produce <laughs> such commodities in your hometown and then sell them to my town oh he likes to talk more than i do all right so there's our next set of tasks. We'll tackle those in the next one, including taking commodities to Maracaibo, which we've already started working on because we have them in one of our trade routes already. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I, that was kind of fun. And we'll keep exploring this game and see if we can't come up with some strategies that make sense and find a good way to play uh, Port Royale 4. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it'll help us all become better players. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, and join us for our next Port Royale 4 video. Thank you.